Hello and welcome back to The Stronghold. I'm the Magi. That's right, I decided it was time to take an on-screen persona. And it's that time again. It's midweek and I want you to play some magic so you can win two free rare or better ICRs. This week's midweek magic is one we kind of saw coming. With the recent release of the Explorer Anthology 2, we kind of had to know they were going to throw us a midweek magic to encourage us to use some wild cards, buy that bundle, and, well, explore the new Explorer format. And uh, I think any time a format changes, one of the best things you can do is turn back to Mono Red. Uh, mono Red is ubiquitous in every single format, and it almost always has at least three versions, one being a very aggressive, hasty creature-based deck, uh, the other extreme being an almost entirely spell-based Mono Red Burn, and then kind of a shifting midpoint of those efficient, aggressive creatures and the most efficient burn available in the format, also known as Red Deck Wins. And this format is no exception whatsoever, but I'm not sure that any of the new red cards released in Explorer Anthology 2 have earned my wild cards yet. And today we are gonna look at an Explorer playable deck that is primarily built from the current standard red deck as well as a few wild cards invested in those Explore Eternal staples for red. Stay tuned. But before we get into all that, allow me to do the awkward thing and promote the channel. A while back, one of my viewers was kind enough to point out that we are the only channel putting out timely midweek magic content. So be sure to subscribe right here at the Planeswalker Stronghold for all of your future midweek magic needs because we will be bringing you a deck list or strategy every single week. So what do you say we put all this aside and just get to that? And here we have this week's version of an Explore Red deck. Uh, this is not one of the principal versions of the meta decks that you'll see in Explorer. Instead, this is a version of Mono Red Prowess built for standard and then modified with a handful of red staple cards that I think are very worthy for your consideration as uses for your wild cards. Uh, everything on the left-hand side of the mountains here are cards that you pick up from Standard uh, and is essentially the basis of your basic Mono Red Prowess. Uh, Ancestral Anger, Kumano, Swift Spear, Play With Fire, uh, Forge Chanter, Electrostatic Infantry, Lightning Strike, uh, Reckless Impulse, Smoldering Egg, Reckless Storm Seeker, Big Score, and Jaya Fiery Negotiator. Every single one of these cards is either uh, very accessible, having drafted in the last two expansions, Dominaria United and, of course, the current Brothers of War. Uh, many of these cards are also accessible through your new player experience. Uh, Jaya is available through uh, one of the jump-in selections. Forgive me, I don't remember which pack it is. Uh, about the hardest things to come up with here would be the Kamanos, but I mean, honestly, uh, Kamanos are something you have either already invested wild cards in or drafted Kamigawa significantly to have. Ancestral Anger is not a bad card to maybe have to come across as uh, only a common. And uh, yeah, everything else here is, uh, is very, very accessible. Now, moving into the cards that I think make good additions to your Explore Historic Repertoire are well worth consideration uh, for not just one wild card, but eventually maybe several. Uh, Runup, 
Ruins is uh, an uncommon land that allows you to sack it and deal damage. It's very nice for finishing things out. Uh, Crash Through is more of a card for this particular deck. Uh, not only does it give you your creatures trample until end of turn, but it replaces itself cantripping as you draw a card. It is a sorcery though, so uh, just be aware you have to telegraph that move when you swing. Uh, Fanatical Firebrand, this is mostly in here as a budgetary constraint. Uh, Fanatical Firebrand and this very cool cosmetic is actually available to you with the promo code Shiny Goblin Pirate. And uh, if you didn't know that, you don't know what I'm talking about, you owe it to yourself to go watch Comprehensive Codes. It's a video which I update every time a new set drops. Uh, so that you are 100% up to speed and have everything you could possibly get as freebies because sometimes the arena economy sucks. Uh, from there, we've got another common skewer, the critics. Uh, the idea here is even though it is a sorcery speed, casting it at its spectacle cost allows you to deal three damage to any target. Uh, spectacle, of course, is the condition of having dealt damage to your opponent this turn or them otherwise having lost life. Uh, Spike Fuel Hazard is one of the modal lands that uh, came out during Zendikar. This one gives you a tapped red mana producing land or an instant speed one damage spell to any target. If a permanent dealt damage this way would die this turn, exile it instead. So it's a great way to finish off uh, some of those more problematic or recursive creatures out there. And uh, because it is also a land, you can basically run it in a deck like this with no opportunity cost because you're just giving up a mountain to do it. Uh, Kazul's Fury is another one of those modal lands. This one allows you to sacrifice a creature when you cast it. Uh, it deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. Since a lot of your creatures are about pumping up with prowess, this is a great way to uh, second main phase, get in that last little bit of damage, or even uh, do it at instant speed in order to sack a creature which is just going to die. Uh, uneventfully and allow it to functionally get through for damage anyway. Very nice hit. Uh, Light at the Stage is one of those bread and butter red cards. Also a sorcery speed with a spectacle cost of one. Uh, exile the top two cards of your library until end of your next turn. You may play those cards. Um, nice thing here is if uh, like first main phase you use something like a play with fire to deal damage to your opponent then you can light up the stage to functionally draw two continue to pump your prowess-esque board state and then swing for that all important win and of course the rare wild card that we've got going on here is bone crusher giant i think this is one of the best rare staples currently in the eternal red family. Uh, it has an instant speed adventure side for one mana and red. Damage cannot be prevented this turn. Uh, great way to start off your volleys in a given turn. And stop deals two damage to any target. So of course this can target your opponent or your opponent's blockers. And then once it's gone on its adventure or even if it has skipped the adventure, for three mana, you get a 4-3 giant creature. Whenever it becomes the target of a spell, Bone Crusher Giant deals two damage to that spell's controller. Uh, pretty nice, hard to remove thing. They're going to take some pain in doing so. Uh, so again, the cards on the right hand side of the mountain here are the wild card considerations for Explorer. And all of these are also available in uh, historic as well uh, the first column being four commons three uncommons and one rare definitely give this some thought um, even beyond an all access uh, style event or something like that 
these are the kind of foothold cards you want to start building your way into a red deck um, in an eternal format. What's that? You didn't catch all that? Well, Matt would like you to know that any deck list applicable to this video can be found down in the doobly-doo. Hey, let's not forget the whole reason to participate in these totally free midweek magic events is the prize support is awesome. And don't forget if this video gets just 10 likes by 8 p.m. tonight on the day of release, I will be live playing this on my Twitch channel. And with all that having been said, don't forget smash that like button like Ronnie J. Wood. And until next time, I'll see you in the arena.